Father, we give you all the glory tonight. We thank you for the privilege we have to partake of existence. We thank you for the honor of knowing you and enjoying fellowship with you. We thank you for even the greater honor of being entrusted with the mandate of your kingdom on the face of the earth. Tonight we have come to draw from your everlasting fountains. Father, we ask for the encounters that will change the lives of men and the empowerment that will cause them to become relevant in kingdom advancement. Thank you, Lord, for everyone looking up to you tonight in faith. We ask that every challenge that they've brought before you, they will be addressed even tonight. Do what only you can do, Abba Father, and let your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' precious name. In the precious name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. Praise God. You may be seated. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm honored to be here tonight to bring us the word of the Lord. I want to sincerely honor his lordship and his dear wife, Bishop Foreman Nedison. Thank you so much for having me here to bring God's word to God's people. All the ministers of God that are here, I sincerely appreciate you for coming. The Lord honor you richly. And very specially, I want to again honor His Excellency, the former governor of this state, Dr. Cholinyami. Thank you so much. I'm honored to be here and to be in your presence. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Tonight, God will do something very exceptional in somebody's life. And if you are in faith with me, your hallelujah will be very loud. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. The theme of our conference is never again. <laughs> what a theme. Can somebody re echo that? Never again. Never again. Never again. If that is your testimony, you will make it louder. Never again. Praise God. So as is my culture, I'll take it from the team scripture and then trust God to apply it as the Lord has burdened my heart tonight. Genesis 9 verse 11. The Bible said, and I will establish my covenant. I'm seeing God's servant. Reverend Stephen Kobe, good to see you. <laughs> Glory to God. It's always an honor to see him. Can we celebrate God's servant? That's the first man that brought me to Taraba State. And every time I'm here, I see him. I bless God for the opportunity. Glory to God. And I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off anymore by the waters of the flood. Neither shall there be any more flood to destroy the earth. This was God affirming his position to secure and to preserve humanity on the face of the earth. We saw from scripture, can we touch the keyboard? Is there anybody? <laughs> Forgive me, there, is a, there are times when we have to accept. <laughs> you know, we need... We need to be enabled by the Spirit and it's important to find your own pathway in the Spirit. Glory to God. And so if you study your scriptures, you discover that in the evolution of humankind, from the time God created man, a point came where the project of man's development was hijacked by the serpent in the garden. The intention of man was captured in Genesis 1.26 when man was created. God said, let us make man in our own image after our likeness and let them have dominion glory to God let us make man thank you in our own image after our likeness and let them have dominion and so God was establishing a civilization in the visible realm and he needed a governor that was to pretend over that civilization it's important for us to know that before this time, 
there had been many, many, many civilizations created by God in the spirit realm. If you study the profile of creation, man is the youngest in God's creation. There have been elders in the spirit, there have been principalities, there have been powers, there have been rulers, and there have been angelic functionaries. So the, the universes of God were already in motion. The agenda of God was already finding expression. But something happened because there was a first earth before this second earth that we are in. Praise God. The creation story you find in Genesis chapter 1 is actually not a creation story. It's a recreation story. And that's why when you read Genesis chapter 1, you will not know how light was created. You will not know how water was created. All of these things already existed. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, the Bible said, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That was the whole story of creation. The document for creation is secluded. Only God has access to it. Because God, one of the things that makes God God is his office as creator. The moment another person becomes creator, he can begin to claim the status of God. Only God is creator. And so the document for creation is not made available to humanity. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And so there was a civilization that was going on in the heavens and in the earth. And if you study your scripture, you will see that in packets, the things that happened before man came were documented. But they were scattered because it's precept upon precept, lines upon lines. And one of the things you will find, especially in Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 23, is the reason why you know there was darkness in Genesis 1 verse 2. Because as you read Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, he said God created the heavens and the earth. And in verse 2, he said, and the earth was void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. You will not understand why there was darkness on the face of the deep. Except as you begin to read prophetic writings. And Jeremiah gave us a glimpse that the reason there was darkness upon the face of the deep was because God passed judgment on the earth. You know, the way God works is that when he gives you a constituency to supervise or to so pretend over, you, your character is what determines the level of authority that you can wield over that constituency. And you can find that even in our own human civilization. When you get into a man's family, the government that rules that family usually will reflect the character of that man. Because you cannot oversee a territory without superimposing your character on that territory. And so the first earth was governed by a principality, one of the archangels of God. Now, that angel rebelled against God. And because he rebelled against God, the old civilization could no longer subsist. So when that angel was judged, you study your Bible in the book of Revelation chapter 12, and you are going to hear the story of how that angel was cast from heaven. And he said, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, for the great deceiver is come. So he was judged in his constituency. He was the one ruling the earth realm. When he was judged, it became impossible for that old civilization to continue. Because that old civilization will model the character of the governor that ruled it. So for God to continue his own agenda, he had to also judge the first earth. So the first earth was judged. That is why there was darkness upon the face of the deep. Now that that earth was judged, there is no body that has the stature to recreate it. It's the creator that had to come back to recreate that earth. So when you hear that the spirit of the Lord hovered upon the face of the deep, a new government was about to be established. And so God had a first government that ruled the first earth. And that first earth was overseen by one of the archangels. When that archangel rebelled and he was charged, the first earth was charged. And when the first earth was charged, darkness was upon the face of the deep. So God came back and recreated the earth. So Genesis chapter 1, from verse 1 to 25, is the story of recreation. That is why God called light to appear. That is why God told the waters of the earth to be separated from the waters of the heaven. That is why every living creature was caught out from the ground. Every fish was caught out of the water. They were bamboozled because of the judgment that came upon the earth. Now God was recreating the earth. After he had recreated the earth, he needed a new governor. The spirits have failed me. Now I will create another being that will rule over the earth. 
And so God went back to the studio of creation. Genesis chapter 1 verse 6 is a location that is not in the universes of God. It's the place where only God dwells. When God wants to have a, a discussion that no spirit can partake of, there's a place he goes to. You know, Paul was talking to us in 1 Timothy 6.16. He said, God dwells in light, unapproachable. The throne of God is not the only place God stays. God sits on his throne to exercise government. But there are places God enters that no man can approach. He dwells in light, unapproachable. That's where God went to in Genesis 1.26. And he began another discussion. Who will rule over this new earth? And the father talked to the son. The son talked to the spirit. And the spirit talked to the father. And the community of the Godhead decided to create a new being. We are not appointing any other angel. We will create a being that has never existed. And this being we will create. We will not create him like a spirit. We will create him with a new order of dispensation. And so they say, let us make man in our own image after our likeness now that we create them let them have dominion over the earth you cannot exercise dominion on the earth except you are like God because that's the code for dominion let us make man in our image after our likeness if they possess our image and our likeness dominion will become natural so that the man will rule over the earth and so this man was created to represent God on the earth realm as his vice regent bringing administration to his purposes on the face of the earth when I read that story I was humbled at the love God has for man because if God created us like the son the word in this context now it would have been glorious if he created us like the spirit it would have been glorious if he created us like the father it would have been glorious when he wanted to create us he combined the dimension of the world the dimension of the spirit and the dimension of the father together and he created us to look like the father the son and the spirit so when you look at a man functioning in glory you will see the totality of god expressed through him But the challenge of this man was ignorance. He didn't know who he was. He didn't know the excellency that God put on his life. And so this fallen prince that was George, that didn't have authority over the earth, sneaked into the garden and began to give him counsel, teaching him the way of rebellion. And unfortunately, this man gave access to this demon, this entity that had been George, and he rebelled against God. And from that time, iniquity entered the new earth. The young earth that was just created also became like the earth that was destroyed. And so when God looked upon it, the Godhead began to contemplate, what can we do to redeem this realm? What can we do to restore this realm? And unfortunately, the only thing to do is to destroy it. Because if the governor becomes defective the territory will also be affected and so what God did was to bring destruction to the earth again that was why the flood of Noah came and so when that flood came the earth was destroyed so that a new civilization can be born but this time around God brought a superior intelligence when a spirit is judged a spirit cannot be redeemed because a spirit is in eternity the spirit is judged there's no redemption for the spirit so when God was creating this new man although his reality was a spirit but God hid him in the flesh so that this man will not be like the first spirit that was forever condemned so that when God want to restore this new creation he can use the gate of biology the gate of reproduction and enter into the corridor of man and recreate man without killing him so what Jesus did was to route the gate of reproduction to enter into the realm of men, receive the judgment of men, die on behalf of men, and so that when he's resurrected, a new man can be born without the human race being wiped out. So it was an intelligence 
in the realm of God. So that earth can be recreated, man can also be recreated without both of them vanishing. So in the days of Noah, the earth was recreated again. In the days of Jesus, man was recreated again, but none of them vanished. This is why we are new creations. The Bible says, whoever is in Christ Jesus is a new creation. It said, all things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So every one of us born of God, we are new creations. And the earth we are living in is an earth that has already been judged. Are you following this? So in Genesis chapter 9 verse 11, where the theme of this conference was extracted from, was God telling us that this earth, I won't destroy it again. I have destroyed it once. I have destroyed it twice. I won't destroy it again until my agenda is completed. That was why he sent Jesus to redeem us. So if you study, God began the project of covenants. So covenants are the systems that God uses to preserve man and to give man status with him until his agenda is completed. And so the first covenant you see here is the Noahic covenant, which is the covenant of exemption. That was why God reiterated that anytime you see the rainbow, know that the earth will no longer be destroyed by water. And so God was giving us an assurance that in him, there will always be exemption for us from danger. That's the covenant of Noah. And so if you understand this precept, you will be bold to call upon God whenever you are in danger. But that was not all. If God exempts you from danger, you can live in poverty, in sorrow, and in pain. So God enacted another covenant in Abraham. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. The covenant of blessing. I'm not only removing you from danger, I will also bless you so that you prosper. Are you following this? And then God did not just prosper. He was not just interested in our prosperity. He went further to enact another covenant in Moses. In the covenant of Moses, it was a covenant of, second, of, of purging, of dealing with the flesh. So he gave us laws. So I separate you from danger. I prosper you, but I will also show you my laws so that you live according to the dictates of my realm. Because it's possible for God to prosper you and you live in iniquity. That's not God's plan. So the whole idea of covenants is to show us God's plan for humanity. I want to separate you from danger. I want to prosper you. But in prospering you, I want you to live holy because I am holy. So the covenant of Abraham exempts, of, of, of Noah, exempts you from danger. The covenant of, Moses, of Abraham prospers you. The covenant of Moses gives you laws that shows you God's standard. But God didn't stop there. Because you can keep God's law and not have relationship with God. So God went further and gave the Davidic covenant. In the Davidic covenant, God made us kings and God brought us into relationship. So when you deal with the protocol of covenants, you are going to see God's progress in restoring man to glory and dignity. First, separating him from danger. Second, providing for him to prosper. Third, giving him laws. So that by those laws, he can understand God's ways and live holy. Then fought, making him a king. And then giving him opportunity for relationship. So that that man can have intimacy with God. And God didn't stop there. In order to consummate the whole covenant, God came in Jesus Christ. Because ideally, what God discovered was that man couldn't keep the covenant. Not the one with Noah. Not the one with Abraham. Not the one with Moses not the one with David. So when God saw that man could not keep the covenant, God became man and kept a covenant with himself. So the father entered the covenant with the son. So Jesus represented man. So Jesus was the one that kept the covenant. The moment Jesus showed up, Jesus entered the covenant with God on our behalf. So we now who are born again, we are no longer in, in a way trying to keep covenant to qualify we are actually the children of the covenant so when we practice the covenant we are not practicing the covenant for qualification when we practice the covenant we are practicing it because it's now our culture i have a son my son is not a co in a covenant with my wife 
I am in the covenant with my wife. My son is the offspring of that covenant. So everything I have, everything my wife has, belong to my son. He doesn't need to do anything to qualify. My son now is an inheritor of the proceeds of that covenant. Notwithstanding, hear this, my son will see practice the covenant because the covenant is the way of our life. But it's no longer the covenant that qualify him. Are you seeing this? So we are not expected to live in sin even though we are not on the law of Moses. But we are to live holy because it's in the nature of our God to be holy. Are you following this? So this is the idea. God is trying to create a new man that has dominion. But that man is now an offspring. So the Bible said, you are the children of the covenant. You are the children of the covenant. So everything God has now belongs to you. And everything that belongs to God, you can receive. Glory to God. Because you are now God's offspring. Nonetheless, you will still live according to God's standard because that's now your nature. You are not obeying so that you qualify. You are obeying so that you become. In doing this, God now takes the responsibility of preservation away from you to himself because now he's your father. You know, when he told Noah, I will no longer destroy the earth for you for your sake. Noah had responsibilities to make it happen. But in Christ, if he tells you, I will not destroy anything for your sake, it's his responsibility as your father. So God empowers you to live like a prince on the earth realm. And so God is no longer your problem. God is not the one who is attempting to destroy. I'm trying to apply this scripture so it can bless someone. Glory to God. But I need you to understand that in the first concept, when God said he will not destroy the earth, God was the one we were afraid of whether destruction will come or not. If we keep his laws or not. But right now, God has become our father. So God will not destroy us. He will teach us, correct us, rebuke us and grow us up. But he will not destroy us. Nonetheless, there is another one that has come. There is another integer that has been introduced into the equation. Jesus said, when I was coming to perfect the covenant so that I take care of you, he said, the prince also came. And so John 10, 10, he said, the thief cometh not but for to kill, to steal, and to destroy. He said, but I am come that you might have life and life to the full. And so if there's anything trying to undermine the quality of your existence now, it's not God that is causing it, it's the devil. This is why never again in this context is no longer God telling you I won't destroy you. Never again is now you telling the devil you can never do anything that compromises my existence. So when you say never again, you are telling the devil no sickness comes from you to my realm. When you say never again, you are telling the devil no destruction comes from you from my realm. Why? Because in Christ, I have peace with God. But I know you are my adversary. He said you have an adversary called the devil. Prowling like a roaring lion. Seeking whom he might devour. The devil wants to destroy you. Never again is you telling the devil what you did last is the last you will ever do. The last person that died is the last person that will die. The last person that was sick is the last person that will be sick. The last person that was destroyed is the last person that was destroyed. Because right now, I walk in my victory in Christ Jesus. But see the challenge. See the challenge. It doesn't end with declaring. You must know what God has provided. Because the way God offers fatherhood is in a way that he doesn't just provide. But he wants you to mature while you are using it. You know even we who are parents here. Why we are giving food to our children? <laughs> we are also training them. We are telling them something. We will not feed you like this forever. By the time you become 22, make sure you have learned how to generate food. So by implication, we are still giving them food. But we are now giving them food through the training we give them. So what the way God provides his fatherhood is by training us to become like him. 
So if you are saying never again, the journey does not begin and end with hoping that God will do something. The journey actually begins from hoping that God will do something to grow into a point where you too can do something. So when you are saying never again, you are also saying, I will grow in God until I can deal with the devil. In 1 John chapter 2, from verse 12 to 14, he said, I write unto you children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write unto you fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you young men, because you are strong. The word of the Lord abides in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. So what God did was that God overcame Satan and gave us the power to keep him in, 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 in his place of defeat. So anybody who is saying never again must know how to exercise authority to keep Satan where he belongs. So you can't say never again and be crying. When you say never again, you take action to make sure the devil cannot. Because trust me, he will try. What I want to teach you tonight is how to exercise your authority to keep the devil where he is. If you don't, it will look as if God lied when he said he's your father. If you don't, it will look as if God lied when he said he has covered you. If you don't, it will look as if God lied when he said he has provided for you. The problem with many Christians is that they either don't know what they have in God or they don't know how to apply it. And so they are supposed to be a wonder in their generation. Yet, they are the ones struggling and you are wondering what is going on. The wise man said, I have seen an abomination under the earth. He said, princes are trekking Why beggars are riding on horses. A man who says, God, the Almighty, is his father, is dying and helpless. A man who says, God, the Almighty, is his father, is frustrated. And you are wondering, is, your, is the Almighty really your father? If yes, is he really Almighty? Because what we don't know is that the outcomes of our lives are testimonies on the kind of God we worship. This is why this conference was put together. That songs that have the capacity to judge the mountains of Esau will rise. And I am persuaded that some of you will live here and Satan will be in trouble. Some of you will live here. The tyranny of Satan in the life of your children in the life of your parents, in your constituencies, they will stop because you will exercise authority. We hail you. We worship you. We hail you. Most high. We hail you. We worship you. We hail you. I read the scripture that changed my life. Galatians chapter 4, verse 1. It said, The heir. The heir. That's the inheritor of everything that belongs to God. Do you know the things that belong to God? All power belongs to Him. A cattle upon a thousand hills belongs to him. Glory belongs to him. Righteousness belongs to him. He said the heir who is supposed to be the inheritor of all of those things. He said if he's a child, he said he's a servant. So there are many people who should wield everything that belongs to God. But they are functioning as servants. And demons are making a mess of them. I made up my mind that I must grow in the things of God. Because when you, when, you, when you are a child, you are not different from a servant, even though you are the Lord of all. So lords can be in bondage if they are children. There are many of us here who are lords, but we are in bondage. I say, the heir, as long as he's a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord. He say it's an abomination. There are many lords that are slaves. People that demons should flee when they appear are oppressed by demons. People that should lend to nations are oppressed by poverty. People that should rule over sin are oppressed by sin. And you are wondering, 
they are children. You know the word child there is the word nepios. It means lacking understanding. The moment understanding comes, authority is conferred. So one of the differences between a child and a son is understanding. He said, as many as are led by the, by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. All of us are children of God, but not all of us are sons. When we become sons, we exercise government and authority. Unto us a child is born, nothing happens. But the moment a son is given, the government of this world shall be upon his shoulder. Children can do nothing about government. And so, one of the ways of saying never again to the devil is by exercising authority. And tonight, I want to show you three protocols for walking in your divine authority. If you know this from this night, a lot of things can begin to happen to you. A whole lot. Is that possible? Walking in your authority. If you want to exert and exercise the authority that God has put upon you by virtue of being a child of God, there are three things, basic amongst other things, that you must be in custody of. You know, the Bible said in John chapter 1 from verse 10 to 12, it said he came into the world, although the world was made by him, he said the world received him not. They knew him not. He came unto his own, his own received him not. He said, but as many as received him, to them he gave the power, the authority, the exousia to become the sons of God. So people who are sons, who can tell the devil, stop, and he listens, are those who know the dynamics of authority. And for you to walk in authority, there are three basic dynamics. Number one, you must come to terms with your DNA. The first thing that confers authority on you is your understanding that you are a child of God. You are not a stranger in the house of God. You are a child of God. Your DNA is what gives you authority. That's why the scripture we started reading from Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. He said, let us make man in our image. After our likeness, let them have dominion. So DNA imparts authority. When a man does not know that he is a child of God, he can never exercise dominion. And the undoing of many Christians is that they think they are church members. They don't know that they belong to the family of God. Denominations are only systems of training. We are citizens of a kingdom. We are children of the living God. God can channel you to Anglican communion as he has done now. The goal is for training. But you are primarily a child of God. You are connected to God by spiritual DNA. In 1 John chapter 4 verse 4, he said, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. The moment you know your DNA, you become an overcomer. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Why? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Many Christians are not aware that they are children of God. Even in the natural, we should be educated enough. Go to a palace and see how princes behave. They know they are not common. There is something about them because they are born into the palace. Go to the house of our rulers. See their children. You will notice the difference. Authority surrounds you. You hardly see the child of a president driving in a, in a commercial vehicle. When he's driving, there's security. You know why? Because the integrity of the father is at stake if anything happens to him. His safety is a matter of priority to the father. And the father knows that if he allows him, the, the, the enemies that can attack him will attack the child. If you can't get the man, get the child, you will get him. So the father will make sure that as a matter of obligation, he surrounds the child with authority. God knows that Satan hates him. He's called the opposer of God. But both God and Satan knows there's nothing Satan can do to God. So the only way Satan wants to get God is to get his children. That 
that is why God put authority on our life. If you know you are a child of God, it imparts authority. Your DNA has made you a prince. Where the word of the king is, there is power. Who can say unto him, what doest thou? But the problem is that most of us don't know. He said they know not. Psalm 82 verse 5 and 6. Neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. I have said, ye are gods because you are the children of the most high. He said, but they fall like the princes. So the reason we faint, the reason Satan has stakes in our life is because we know not. Jesus taught us the place of knowledge. The prophets taught the same. He said, my people are destroyed. Not because God is powerless, but for the lack of knowledge. You must understand that Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is divinity expressed through humanity. You must understand that you are not a Christian because you are part of a church. You must understand that you are a Christian because now Christ in you is the hope of glory. God lives on your inside. You carry the DNA of God. In 1 Corinthians 6, 17, he say, him that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. God can be separated from you. You are one spirit with God. So anything God can do, you can do. Because it's a DNA thing. If you read your Bible, one thing that will fascinate you is that everything Jesus has was what God gave us. The anointing of Jesus is what God gave us. Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Not many days from now, you shall be anointed with the Holy Ghost and power. The same faith Jesus has is the same faith that we have. Galatians 2.20 I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. The life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Romans 12.3 Unto us that believe God dealt the measure of faith. The faith you have is the faith of Jesus. The anointing you have is the anointing of Jesus. And that's not all. The righteousness you have is the righteousness of Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5 21 He made him that was without sin to become sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And that's not all. The life you have now is the same life Jesus had. 1 John 5 11 to 13 He said this is the record. God has given us eternal life. He said but this life is in his son. He said whoever has the son has life. He said these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. So it's the same life that was powering Jesus, the same faith that was powering Jesus, the same anointing that was powering Jesus, the same righteousness that was powering Jesus are the same things that are in you now. What is the problem? They know not. Neither will they understand. And because they know not, he said by default, they will walk in darkness. But the day they know, they will realize that the light shineth in the darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. If you want to walk in authority, you must come to terms with your DNA. I was born in Benue. I was born in Nigeria. But I am not primarily a Nigerian. I'm an ambassador of heaven to Nigeria. I'm a citizen of Zion. I'm a member of the family of God. That's my first origin. I know I carry God. So there are many nonsense that I don't allow. If it won't happen to Jesus, it can't happen to me. Because I'm an extension of Christ. I have that knowledge. That's why I fight with audacity. That's why I fight with boldness. Because if Jesus could not be defeated, I cannot be defeated. I don't come in myself. I come in the name of the Lord. I am born of God. And if I'm born of God, I must overcome. It's a law in the spirit. The second thing you must know about your DNA is that Everybody that carries the DNA of Christ, the spirit of Christ moves him. Because when the Holy Ghost came into you, the goal of the Holy Ghost is to bring Christ into you. When he said Christ in you is the hope of glory, it means the Holy Ghost brought Christ into you. So there are different dimensions of the expression of the Holy Ghost. One of those dimensions is called the operation of the spirit of Christ. So when a man carries the DNA of Christ, the spirit of Christ walks in him. Romans 8 verse 9, he said, you are not in the flesh. He said, you are in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God lives in you. You are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. Now see what he now said. 
He said, now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So the spirit of God dwells in you, but one of the operations of the spirit of God is called the spirit of Christ. What is the errand of the spirit of Christ? To make you possess experientially everything that Christ made available by reason of his death, burial, and resurrection. If you study this scripture in context, from Romans 7 verse 20 to Romans 8 verse 5, you are going to see one of Paul's struggles. Paul was struggling with sin. Paul said, I desire to do the will of God because there is a law in my mind that wants to do the will of God. He said, but I discover that there's another law in my members that negates me from doing the will of God. So he said, in the law of my mind, I want to do the will of God. He said, but in the law of my members, I can't do the will of God. And then it comes to Romans 8 verse 1 and 2. He said, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And he now said, the law of the spirit of life, that's the spirit of Christ, that walks in me, sets me free from the law of sin and death. So the operation of the spirit of Christ is to bring you into the experience of what Christ has made available. So a man knows that he belongs to Christ and he has the DNA of Christ. And the moment he knows that, the law of the spirit of Christ is activated. That law is what empowers you to live in dominion. But the problem is that most of us don't know how to cooperate with that law. Because that law is organic. There are many times you wake up in the morning, you want to jump out. And that thing holds you on the bed. Say, don't go yet. Speak in tongues. You will not read it in a textbook. It's not theology. It's organic reality. There are many times you wake up in the morning, you want to eat because you are hungry and it looks like it's a sin to eat. That's not a doctrine. If you teach it, you'll be in error. But that is the operation of the Spirit of Christ. There is a dimension He wants to bring into your life. And so what He's doing is that He is reordering the operations of your spirit so that you can possess it. There are many times, many seasons, you carry your phone, you go on the internet, it, you will, it will look as if they are piercing you with arrows. The internet will become noisy. The spirit of Christ is telling you downloads are about to take place. There is something of God that is about to wake up in you. But people who don't know the way of the spirit, when they feel it, they negate it. And when they negate it, they choke the spirit of Christ. And they are wondering, why do I say in the name of Jesus, demons don't go? Because it's not a reality to you. The spirit of Christ. And every one of us seated here, you know you have experienced it many, many, many times. In fact, most times when you violate it, it looks like you are fornicated. Your spirit is so offended. And that offense is because you are denying yourself of realities. The spirit of Christ. The spirit. The spirit. As you leave this conference, if you want to exercise authority and tell Satan, never again, when the spirit of Christ begins to move you, better comply. That's where your power lies. That's where your power, that's where your authority lies. Because when Satan begins to walk, that same spirit is what will tell you what to do. Because your response is not the same at every time. There are times when something goes wrong around you and holy anger erupts in your spirit. That's not your emotion. That's the spirit of Christ. There are times when something goes wrong around you and scriptures start being activated. Scriptures, some of them you read 10 years ago. That's the spirit of Christ. It is through those channels that authority is released. But many don't give the spirit of Christ a chance. That's why they can't see authority in their lives. Now, when the spirit of Christ begins to walk, then it moves to the spirit of faith. The spirit of faith is where the power you receive through the spirit of Christ is administered. 2 Corinthians 4.13, he said, According as it is written, they believe and have spoken. He said, we have been the same spirit of faith we believe and therefore we speak so the spirit of christ brings the reality the spirit of faith helps you to transmit it so that force that moves you to act is a dimension of the holy ghost it's called the spirit of faith if you want to walk in authority you must understand the dynamics of dna first of all you must become aware that you carry the dna of god and then secondly you must become aware that that dna prompts you to certain spiritual consecrations and then thirdly we must become aware that as you keep those consecrations that dna also prompts you to take actions in the face of challenges do you know why most of you were defeated somebody was talking 
you are finished. And then you heard that spirit tell you, I can't be finished. And you didn't respond. And you left and you were finished. Because you don't know the spirit of faith. The spirit of faith is a talking spirit. Some of you, you were there. Somebody looked at you and said, you will see. And you just walked away like a lamb. The lamb is slaughtered. It's the lion that overcomes. You will see. <laughs> Some of us have a thousand answers. Some people gather together and say, in one month, if it's not finished, we are, we are finished. I say you will finish. Oh, because this one doesn't finish. The Bible says, gather together, you will scatter. Take counsel together, it shall come to know. Speak the word, it shall not stand. I respond with scriptures. Finish where? He said, although the enemy comes in, he said, like a flood, the spirit of God lift up a standard against them. Finish where? Who told you? He said, who is it that saith a thing? And it cometh to pass when the Lord commands it not. You are not permitted to speak any negative evil into my space. I will uproot it and throw it back. All of that is DNA. This is not you thinking to talk. The thing we are, we happen before you think. Sometimes we even respond before you say, what did I say? Because it's not your mind walking. It's the spirit of Christ walking inside you. That's the secret of authority. Find out. Men who have authority. I was listening to Bishop David Odepo and he said something. When they were seated, planning to build their auditorium. 50,000 seat auditorium. None like that in the world. Before that time. And some of the architects. Now these are not devils. Though. Just to show you the level to which this thing works in some people. If it's a devil, if it's something about sin, you'll say it's sin. The architects that were supposed to be professionals, when he told them, this is what you want to do, there will be no pillar in the building. And it will be done in one year. One of them said, it is impossible. <laughs> that impossible that the man of God had, something rose inside him. Shut up! Get out of here! <laughs> what, what do you mean? It's impossible. You know, this is the architect. You hired him. You should listen to him. But sometimes the spirit of Christ rises beyond reason. He rises beyond human opinion. That's where power is. If he didn't, the building would not have been completed. Do you know what God wants us to do? Some of you at the age of 17, God wants you to be a wonder to your world. Nobody around you have done it before. The environment negates it. If you listen to the environment, you will never become. But every day, the spirit of Christ will be roaring it on your inside. Roaring it on your inside. Roaring it. You will become when you start saying it. You will start talking it. No matter the obstacle, you will become. When he told Joseph that he will be a prime minister, 11 stars bowing before him, he said it. They sold him as a slave, but he became. But if he kept quiet, he would have remained as his father's choice son. And all of them would have died of poverty. You want power? Be sensitive to the oppression of the spirit of Christ. Your DNA came with a package. Your DNA came with a package. You must grow it. It's not enough that you are like God. You must grow into God in his fullness. My son looks exactly like me. But he can't do one tenth of what I can do. Because he's still growing. So it's not like it's not there, but he will do it when he grows. This is how to grow. Follow the consciousness. Follow the spirit of Christ. Follow the spirit of faith. And before you know what is happening, your muscles will become big. And when you talk, even the demons who were not present will be advised not to come. Do you think some demons in this city came here? They saw what I did in Ghana two days ago. I'm just coming from Ghana. They have told their colleagues, if you go there, you'll be in trouble. You don't know. They've told their colleagues, I'm living here to Lagos. The ones in Lagos are already aware. In fact, the demons are watching to see what will happen. And things will happen here today. Oh. Things will happen here. It's the spirit of Christ. It's the ruler among the spirits. When he moves, every spirit shuts up. And that's the first key for authority. The second key for authority is to have an understanding of your placement in the spirit. Many Christians don't know where they are placed. See, what I'm teaching you here is the basics of Christianity. 
this is the basics this is elementary christianity but many don't even know it that's why people are frustrated i was teaching my people there are seven realms of power the lowest realm of power is to cast out devils if you study luke 10 19 to 21 when the disciples return to jesus celebrating that they have cast out devils jesus said don't celebrate about it he said celebrate rather that your name is written in the book of life and jesus turned to pray to the father and he said i thank you father that you have revealed these things to babes so it is babes that cast out demons meanwhile there are many christians who can't cast out devils demons are tormenting them in their dream in their walk and they are confused meanwhile all they need to do is to stand and say in the name of jesus i rebuke you live here forever but they don't know they don't know casting out devils they don't know if you want to walk in authority number two you must know your placement in the spirit Ephesians 1 verse 19 to 21 he was talking about the things God has given to us go to verse 20 talking about the power that God wrought in Christ he said when he raised him up from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places the right hand of God look at that scripture he didn't say right hand side he said right hand right hand in kingdom context is the place of authority so he said Christ sat at the right hand of God glory to God next verse where is the right hand of God? Far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in the world that is what? To come. Go to Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. When scriptures were written, there were no chapters. So it's the same story that is talking. It come to verse 6. He said, and he has raised us up together and made us to sit together. Where? In heavenly places. So where Christ is seated far above principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness is where you are sitting. But many are not aware. You think you are sitting in Jalingo. That's why you experience what happens to those who, are, who live in Jalingo. You may be walking in Jalingo, but you are seated in heavenly places. If you are not aware of that, you'll be in trouble. Most of you who are here, when a senator comes from Abuja, hope you know that he doesn't subject himself to the things happening to you here. He is supposed to be part of you, but he's sitting in power. So even if he drives through Jalingo, he knows that he sits in a senate chamber. He is conscious of where he's sitting. And when that senator is talking, even if he's talking in Jalingo, he knows he's talking to the seat of power. His words carry weight because of where he's seated. The problem with many Christians is that we define ourselves based on the family where we came from. That was the undoing of Gideon. Gideon carried the salvation of Israel, but they thought he was from the smallest family in Israel. When the angel saluted him, the angel didn't salute him based on his family. The angel looked at him and said, Thou mighty man of valor. See, if you don't know that you are seated with Christ, the state where you come from will limit you. The family where you come from will limit you. When I started preaching, they told me, people who make global impact, at least they come from a five to six generation of preachers. When I looked at myself, I was the first person who spoke in tongues. Are you trying to tell me that it's my great grandson that will make impact? I went with trouble. And I started checking in my spirit. That was when the Holy Ghost spoke to me. He said, you come from God the Father. You come from God the Son. You come from God the Holy Spirit. You have more than a million ancestors. Because everybody that was born came from this world. So when people look at me, they say, how many? I, see, I know the place of priesthood. Don't get me wrong. Priesthood can reduce warfare for you. But I'm telling you, there is a superior revelation. If you know you are connected to God, if you know you are seated with God, you will talk from where God talks. From that day, when they ask me, where do you come from? I say, I come from God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. 
everything I need is already there. I have a heritage of Melchizedek. Nothing can stop me. I talk like a man in authority. Do you think when I want to pray for the sick here, I will start saying, sickness, if you don't mind, go. Which sickness goes like that? Or I'll say, every demon that is here, <laughs> we have gathered, though. if you like, better go. They will look at you and make a mess of you. When you want to talk, you talk like a man in power. He said, where the word of the prince is, there is power. Who can say unto him, what doest thou? I will stand here and say, every sickness in the name of Jesus, come out. They have intelligence. They know. When a man in power is talking and he knows, you who listens, you know. And the one who doesn't know when he talks, you know. We are seated with Christ. Now, because we are seated with Christ, there are three resources of Christ we have the right to use. Number one is his name. Can I tell you the excellency of that name? I wish I had time to do some Bible studies here. See, if you study the Old Testament, you will notice something. You know, God does not need introduction. All of us know God. Though. Even the atheists that claim there's no God, he's just angry with God. That's why when you, when you ask him, instead of telling you there's no God, he will start asking you, if there's God, why did my father die? If there's God, why is there evil? He's just angry with God. There's nobody that can claim there's no God. And anybody who successfully claims there's no God is not an atheist, he's a fool. The Bible says a fool says in his heart there's no God. So there's nothing like atheist. Anybody who says he's an atheist is either angry with God or is a fool. You can't successfully claim there's no God. The Bible said that light is the true light that lighted every man that cometh into the world. Every man on earth has a witness that there's God. Every man. Nobody can claim there's no God. So in the Old Testament, the names of God are not meant to introduce him. The names of God are designed to activate dimensions and possibilities. So when God told Abraham, I am El Shaddai, it's not for introduction. It's so that anytime you have need, if you call El Shaddai, your needs will be met. So the reason Abraham was superfluously wealthy was because he knew El Shaddai. And if you study the scripture, you will notice that when these men want to die, they transfer the aggregation of that blessing through that name to their children. El Shaddai bless you. That's what they did. They didn't necessarily give their children cows because cows finish. Cow is finish. Camels finish. When they want to leave, they give their children the names of God that they encountered. That's why when God met Moses, he said, by my name, El Shaddai, have I revealed myself to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So the wealth of Abraham is El Shaddai. The wealth of Isaac is El Shaddai. The wealth of Jacob is El Shaddai. And so when Abraham came back from the battle of the kings, the kings wanted to, of Sodom, wanted to give him the spoils of war. He said, I lift my hand towards God. I will not take a latchet from you, lest you say you made Abraham rich. It's God that is my prosperity. Isaac went to Gera. There was famine. He wanted to run to Egypt. God said, stay still in Gera. It's not location that will prosper you. Did you read the days of your father? Lot ran to a location. He ran away. What prospers you is the name that you carry. I will bless you in this land. And Isaac waited. The Bible said that same year, Isaac's work strong until he became exceedingly great and the Philistines envied him. Look at the level of their envy. Isaac dug a well. They collected it because there was water. They were digging. They were not finding water because there was drought. But when Isaac dug, they saw water. They thought he discovered the right location. The guy is not a geologist. When they collected the well, he didn't fight. He left. He dug another one. The one they collected dried. They followed him and collected the next one. He looked at them. You think his location? He left them and dug another one. When they collected and collected, and their own keep drying, and his own keep containing water, they told themselves, this thing is not about location. It's about who is digging. And all the guy had was El Shaddai. And the same thing happened with Jacob. Jacob went to the house of Laban. Ten times, Laban cheated him, collected what belonged to him. 
But in all of those 10 times, the guy became wealthier. Until Laban looked at him and said, I have come to realize by divination that God blessed me because of you. So it's not even about the business. It's about what you carry. Have you not looked at our world? Look at all these ritualists. When a spirit wants to mesmerize you, he can tell you, go and sell water. He can tell you, go and wash cars. He will show you the least thing and prosper you. When people see you, they will know this thing is not based on what you are doing. That's why we call it blood money. Because we know somebody can be selling pure water in Jalingo and be a billionaire. So you know this one, there's a spirit involved. That's how spirits work. The only thing with Satan is that he brings sorrow and he does it in iniquity. But when God blesses you, he will bless you beyond what eyes have seen, what ears have heard, what has happened to the heart of men. But the way he blesses amongst other things is to give you his name. So when Abraham says, El Shaddai, all his needs are met. And God did the same with Moses, with Elijah, with Daniel. That's why you have many names in the Old Testament. When he met Moses, he wanted Moses to go and conquer the strongest kingdom in the world. What Moses needs is not El Shaddai. That's why he gave him, I am that I am. You need Jehovah. Because this time, is a warrior you need, not a provider. When you are going to Pharaoh, you don't need a provider. You need a warrior. And Moses carried Jehovah and entered Egypt, brought ten plagues and shut down the nation. And every man that made him part, God gave him a name. When we came into the New Testament, God knew that if we want to carry all those names, there will be too many for us. So the Bible said, it pleased the Father that the fullness of the Godhead should dwell in him bodily. So when he gave us the name of Jesus, he gave us El Shaddai, he gave us Elohim, he gave us Jairi, he gave us Shama, he gave us Nisi, he gave us Sabua, he gave us El Elyon. So when I say Jesus, every demon knows that the full dimension of God has been activated. Nobody has the right to use that name. Only us who are born of God. That's why when he resurrected, he said, I'm going to my father, your father. My God, your God. In Mark 16, 17, he said, this sign shall follow them that believe in my name. So if you are seated with Christ, you will do all things in the name of God. And when the name of Jesus is summoned, every demon knows that enough is enough. When the name of Jesus is invoked, every demon knows that never again. The problem is that you don't know you are seated with Christ. So even when you use that name, you use it like a stranger. When you use that name from the place of revelation, that I'm not just trying to call a name that is a religious name. I'm actually invoking where I am seated. The power that will respond to you, even you will not believe it. The Bible said at that name, every knee bows. He said, every tongue confesses that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So you have the DNA of God. Because of that, you can exercise authority. You have the name of God because you are seated with Christ. And on the strength of that, you can exercise authority. But that's not all. There's yet another one. For you to exercise authority, you must also walk in obedience to God. The Bible said in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5 to 10, verse 3 to 6, it says, casting down imagination and every high standing thing that opposes the name of the Lord. And it says, bringing into captivity all things to the obedience of Christ. It says, when your obedience is fulfilled, it says, then you fulfill other disobedience. There is a dimension of authority that responds to your consciousness of your DNA. There's a dimension of authority that responds to your understanding of where you are seated with Christ and by implication using his name. But there's also a dimension of authority that responds to you because you submit to the authority of the Holy Spirit. When you find Christians who walk in lawlessness, they will become victims. Satan knows this truth. That's why before Satan attacks you, he makes you disobey God so that you cannot exert your own authority. In Romans 6.16, it says, Whomever you yield yourself servant to obey, it says, The servant of him you are, whom you have obeyed. So the day you rebel against God, and worst case scenario, makes it a practice, that day you strip yourself of authority. And when you lose your authority, 
Satan will quote it a million times in the spirit. Did you read when he came to Jesus on the Mount of Temptation? He said, bow to me, I will give you all these things that you are seeing. For it has been delivered to me. He understands the legality. That's why you must not make the mistake to make the practice of sin your practice. If you do that, you will shout. Demons will laugh. You will pray overnight. They will still be there. Because they know you don't know the realm you are calling. Because the first sign that you know the realm you are invoking is your submission to that realm. If you disobey that realm, you mean, it means you are telling that realm that it's powerless. If you know God is as powerful as you claim, you will tremble at his presence. If you know the realms of God is as strong and powerful as you claim, you will obey that realm. If you disobey God and rebel against God, you are making a statement in the spirit that I can do what I want because this realm does not have any power to make demand of me or to account of me submission. But the day you become obedient to that realm, you begin to exert powers that are beyond human imagination. Now, if you have authority, what are the jurisdictions of the exercise of authority? I give you three quickly. Number one, spirits. You have authority over every spirit that is not of God. Every spirit, whether principality or power, ruler of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places, whatever they are called, so long as they are not in God's quadrant, you have authority over them. Mark 16, 17. He said, in my name, cast out devils. So we don't negotiate with them. We command them. They have no choice but to obey. He didn't say cast out devil. He said cast out devils. Because he already told us in Ephesians 1, 21 and 22 and Ephesians 2, 6 that we are seated with Christ and that place is above every principality, every dominion and every name that is named. So on the strength of that, he said, in that name, that means functioning from that place of authority. He said, let's cast out devils. And that was what Jesus also did. And that's what God expects us to do. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 16 to 17, he said, when the evening was come, thank God this is evening. So the practicals will happen here too. He said, they brought all that were possessed of devils and all that were sick. And he said they rebuked them by his word. When we talk, demons obey. You must become mindful. Because it's one thing to have authority. It's another thing to know the jurisdiction of his exercise. Most of you don't know that you have authority over demons. That's why when demons are doing things, you are running asking for help. Stop asking for help. Take authority. If you dream and somebody attacks you, it's a demon. When you wake up, there's no distance between dream realm and physical realm all of them is spirit realm stand in your bedroom and say you devil where did you come from who gave you permission you have trespassed my jurisdiction in the name of Jesus I bind you and I decree that you will never see most of you don't know when you go home learn how to torment devils don't let them torment you every demon that flies here go under the torment of fire and see if they will come again even if they take the form of a bed, they will fall when they pass there. It's not because those who experience it are big men of God. It's because they understand their authority. You wake up, somebody tells you, oh, well, your child wakes up, all of a sudden, something is going wrong. Stop, you Satan. Who gave you the right to come here? Telling you, I've seen strange things. See, what we demonstrate on the altar is nothing compared to what happens to us in our personal lives. My wife was seven months pregnant. Far in the nation of Rwanda. They came and say, amniotic fluid is too much. What does that mean? <laughs> it's an emergency situation. They wanted to give her injection to mature fast the lungs of my son. Say, who told you my son's lung will mature by, by injection? Mature would fast. They say, in the next time of life, you'll be with child. There's a time of life. It's got nine months. You devil, take off your hands. In the name of Jesus, I decree amniotic fluid become normal. Child, stay there. <laughs> you are not designed to come out until after nine months. Stay there. And after, after one day, they say, oh, maybe it's fever. Uh -huh. Diagnosis have changed. <laughs> take it.
take it for granted, you'll be shocked. A, a pain can become a tumor. A tumor can become a cancer. Because you gave room. He said, give no place to the devil. These are the fights we fight on daily basis. My little boy was born. They say, ah, they were looking at the, whether it's the scrotum or something that they say some development, it can be hynea. Say, what, the child hynea? Who told you children should have hynea? In the name of Jesus, I change it. I change it. Those are devils. If they can't get you, they will come for your children. My son is not yet mature enough to exercise faith. So I exercise faith on his behalf. I will teach him faith while he's growing. But while he's yet growing, oh God, I'm here like a gatekeeper. You don't pass anywhere to this place. There's no jurisdiction. There's no jurisdiction. You don't know how to fight. Be used to the name of Jesus. So keep it close. It's one of the strongest weapons in your quiver. You can hit leg on stone and say it's accident. If you are not careful, they will cut off that leg. Have you not seen people with small growth that became tumor and became cancer? Somebody hit leg on stone, small injury, became ulcer, and that leg was amputated. Satan can take advantage of anything. That's why the moment you discern that Satan is there, let the lion in you wake up. You are 23 years old. Nobody say you are beautiful. You say it's coincidence. Who told you? I'm not saying throw yourself around. But what are you saying? When you mature, you should be seen. So that you can be married. Any devil, anything you are doing around here, I, I take authority. I sanitize my atmosphere. Favor is my name. As I step... <laughs> oh, most of you don't know how we fight. We fight brutal. We fight brutal. See, some of us are like naked wires. If we suspect Satan, we will rise up in war. So he doesn't come close. Because he doesn't have enough weapons. He knows if he tries anything, we will cause damage. We will cause damage. My dad stood up one day, couldn't walk again. He said, hey, partial paralysis. Before we know what is happening, they say, prostate cancer. <laughs> what is going on here? <laughs> what you, what is it? Mahoria Tafakore, Vahila, Katoa, Shede, Beruska, Bambari. See, when you can't explain again, they enter the mystery realm. Veraga, Dusa, Vedash, Bahiro, Barua, Zegezizi, 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 Azizana, Bambara, Katoa, Zezezazgavira, Barak, Zazane, Zezekida, Babaruta, Zegzago, Zagzaziza, Vavavapina, Zazas, Zagzazasa, Aragatida, Boborata, Dea, Dua, Dea, Dua. Guess what? As we were praying that night, suddenly my ear opened. I was brought into a meeting. Three men gang up together and they were talking against my father. How can all his children be educated? They are married. They are doing well. We will kill him. Oh! Imagine if I say, oh, he's old age. Before you assume, make sure you check in the spirit. If I say old age, things would have gone wrong. The moment I heard it, Marwa, Viviva, even the tongues changed. Oh my God. I was fellowshipping before. Now I'm about to fight. He said, put on the whole armor of God. It's not the Holy Ghost that puts it on you. You are the one that puts it on. Marekedua, Tetetabosh, Fafahua, Tetekapapua, Zakatu, Papara, Tatatia, Arwate, Tetene, Esene, Katuna, Shakata. As I was praying, brothers and sisters, I saw a beam descending from heaven. It was like a man, but it was shining like a sun. I knew judgment has come. The moment I saw it, I began to write laws. I first of all canceled all the symptoms. Then I judged those who had ganged up. I said, if you don't repent, seven days you'll die. They said, suffer not the weeks to live. Three days, my dad became perfect. No need for drugs. There are sicknesses that can come by natural effect. But I can tell you most of the time, Satan is there. When the healings of Jesus was summarized, Acts 10, 38, you see how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. Who went about doing good? Healing what? All that were oppressed. Because if Satan is not there directly, he's there indirectly. 
And if it's there indirectly and you allow it, it will come directly. The people died because they refused to repent. I read my Bible. The Bible said, precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of a saint. And I started checking. That means if Satan attacks a Christian who doesn't know how to fight, even if he dies, God will be happy that a saint has gone home. That is why I will not let the devil kill me or anybody. Because if you come home, God will be happy. But only go when your purpose is complete. So don't let anybody send you there until your time is come. The way the patriots go home is when they fulfill the will of God, they rest. We are not killed. We, we rest. We rest in glory. And we pass judgment. You have authority over spirits. Listen. From today, begin to exercise it. Most of you don't exercise it. That's why you don't grow in it. He said, thou believest that there's only one God. James 2, 19, 20. He said, thou doest well. He said, the devil also believes and trembles. He said, but oh vain man, faith without works is dead. The difference between our faith and that of the devil is that we obey and we walk it out. We walk it. Start casting out demons today. First two weeks, none of them will go. They want to intimidate you. Don't stop. Read more scriptures. Fast, pray, come back. The more revelation, the more result. And some revelations are not read. They are experienced in the field. Deal with Satan. You have jurisdiction there. The first Adam didn't even have this jurisdiction. The jurisdiction of the first Adam is birds of the air, fish of the water, creeping things on the earth. But our own jurisdiction enters the second heaven. We war against principalities and powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. It's not everything that bishop will do for you. It's not everything that prophet and apostle will do for you. If they do everything for you, you will be a child. God allows you to do some. That's why he gave you his name. Exercise it over devils. The second place to exercise authority is over circumstances. See, circumstances of intelligence. Make no mistake about it. When you talk, they hear. Go and look at the life of Jesus. Things that you think require administration. Jesus spoke to them. He went to a tree. A fig tree. Tree had no fruit. You will say, well, maybe the, the, it's the season. That's not Jesus. He spoke to the tree. The Bible said he answered the tree. He didn't even talk to it. He answered. Because every circumstance is talking to you. Your answer is what determines the outcome. And Jesus answered the tree and said, no man will eat of you. You keep quiet in the face of circumstance. You are finished. In John chapter 11, he went to Lazarus' burial. He has been buried four days. At this point, let's just thank God and go home. Not Jesus. He said, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. Where did you keep him? People started advising him. Don't embarrass yourself, Lord. Your teachings are very sound. We respect you. Where did you keep him? I'm not a theologian. And they took him to the grave. If you were the one, at least you enter to look at the situation. He stood outside. He didn't bother to know whether the guy was rotting. I thank you, Father, that you always hear me. Lazarus, come forth. And he didn't just wake up. The power carried the man. Because the man was tied. The power carried him to the door. He said, lose him, let him go. Jesus was preaching to 5,000 men. Not counting women and children. John 6, 1 to 12. Food is finished. And he looked at them, what do you have? They told him, that's the wrong question, Lord. With all due respect. Because even the year's wages can't help. The best thing to do is to let them go home. He said they will faint. On their way home, what do you have? They say, well, it's only a young boy that has five loaves and two fish. He said, bring it. Thank you, Father. Take, give them. And bread multiply. You can do something about your circumstance. That's the reason you have authority. You didn't have authority. You don't have authority so that you can come to church and sing. You have authority so that you can change situations. And those who were with Jesus knew. He went to a wedding feast in Canaan. John chapter 2 verse 1 to 12. The wine is finished. Go and buy more. When wine finished, you look for money. Not me. But not Jesus. He said, fill the water pot with wine. And they fill six water pot. No prayer. Fetch. Go and give the governor of the feast. And when they took it, the guy exclaimed, Others give the best wine at the beginning. You are giving the best at the end. 
because the master knew that we could change circumstances he was in a turbulent boat that was about to sink if you were the one you would start blaming the people who built the boat that's the wrong time to talk that thing. he stood up and rebuked the wave and there was a great calm and the people looked at him and said what manner of man is this that even the wind and the wave obey him now the question is if it was only with Jesus that would have been good we would have understood but when Jesus was about to leave in John 14 12 he said the works that I do he said you will do also he said greater works that means if I spoke to circumstances and they obeyed you too should speak to circumstances they will obey see next time things are going wrong before you start looking for men talk to those things it may look foolish that's why you are a spiritual man sometimes your action make you look like you are mad I know when you don't have food you should walk but before you start walking talk talk then act talk your talking releases your faith talk don't be idle don't be irresponsible but before you take any physical responsibility make sure you take spiritual responsibility because what you may not know is that that circumstance may be aided by demons we can change circumstances we can change situations we are not helpless we have authority so that we can turn things around that's why when things go wrong God send men I came here tonight because there are people's circumstances that must change fast that's why I came and I don't even have time for counseling I have time for commandments when I give command some people here will get jobs when I give command some people here will be healed when I give command things will happen here now because I know this thing it's not about my title I know this thing you will see people healed here this night because these walls they never fail they say we have not believed cunningly devised fables what I'm sharing with you are not fables they are realities and finally jurisdiction of authority are territories systems and established institutions you can change things in territories I was shocked when I was reading the Chronicles of David when King Saul died I saw that David was causing mountains and I wondered who taught this man this thing at this level he said cause be the mountains of Giboah what were you expecting the mountain to do so the guy knew there was an intelligence with the man that even territories are part of us that means mountains can help us to fight that was the understanding of David and David caused the mountain for being quiet in the days of war Joshua was fighting he saw that the sun gave them advantage and when the sun was about to go down Joshua stood up in Joshua 10 verse 12 he said let the sun remain upon the mountains of Ajalon he said let the moon remain upon the valley of Gibeon the Bible said the sun did not make haste to go down these were men who changed territorial issues they didn't have the Holy Ghost you are here Christ is in you and you can't talk even in your family we have authority we don't know what to use it for as we are seated in this room if all of us have understanding we can change this nation by praying people who should not be in power will be removed people who should come into power will be brought in policy i'm telling you if you read the bible and read history nations were altered when the saints gather but we we have rituals without understanding you must grow to understand that see you have authority to affect your territory and you may not start with your nation start with your family when things go wrong let everybody sleep when they are sleeping you wake up and begin to pray and begin to seek understanding seek understanding a point will come a word will come into your mouth if you say it you can change the fortune of a family that's what authority is meant for and the good news tonight is that this authority is not for apostles it's not for prophets it's not for evangelists it's not for pastors it's not for teachers it's for every believer it's called the believers authority 
every one of us seated here can wield this authority. I was in Ghana yesterday and I finished teaching. A young man, I gave a word of knowledge. A young man stepped on charm. He couldn't walk. He was literally limping, pulling the leg on the ground like a log, a log of wood. When they brought him to, fro to the front, they were already charged. You know, the gospel imparts faith. The people were already charged. I said, who want to pray for this man? Over 20 people lifted their hands. At random, I picked a man, said, come. The guy held the leg, saying, the name of Jesus, the power of God, hit the man. This guy didn't prepare for miracle service. He came like every other person, but he had something that activated the spirit. Jesus, power hit this guy. The guy fell. When he stood up, he started running. If I did it, some will say, oh, anointed man of God. Others will say, it's fake. But now, I was not the one who did it. They received the truth of the gospel and all of them were coronated for authority. I prophesy over someone tonight. I prophesy over someone tonight. You are stepping into your authority now. You are stepping into your authority now. You are stepping into your authority now. Aliyah. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Can we pray in the Holy Ghost for two minutes? I want to release something over this atmosphere, but I need your spirit to be ready. Can we pray in the spirit? If you are born again, this is your time. One of the triggers of power is prayer. Parakatona. Talika Pataros. Are you tired of that situation? In your family? In your church? In your charity? Sons must arise. Sarah. Paraka Tefetenesh. Tehila Parute Tavakira. You are mighty on your throne. You reign, you reign, you reign. You reign, you reign, you reign. You you reign, you reign, you reign. You reign, you reign, you reign. You reign, you Men that carry dimensions of heaven, custodians of power, keepers of secrets, rulers of our territories, Sahila, Pareno, Tataka.
advance toward heaven. This is the hour. The first thing God wants to do tonight is to activate the powers of your ordination. Men that carry dimensions, but they are locked, and Satan has been messing with you. He said, I've seen an abomination under the sun. Princes are trekking, beggars are riding, but we are about to revert the equation. Princes will ride on their horses tonight. Father, oh my God, I'm seeing the fire beginning to descend. Flames of fire. Flames of fire. He maketh his angel spirits, but his ministers. They are a flame of fire. His ministers, they are a flame of fire. God shall help me now. I'm seeing that impartation. It has begun. Wherever they are, bring them here now. Bring them here. The fire of the presence. The fire of the presence. Holy Ghost, Sarota, Makareda, Tetias, Belekaduna, Zephos, Zatina. There are 14 of them coming under that fire now. Apostolic coordination. Prophetic coordination. Maleko, Sapara, Zazi, Zazi. Oh, Ratetai. Princes of Zion, Priestesses of the altar, Sahila, Perito, Parida, Vadak, we produce the mountain and the lapel and I. We produce the mountain Lift those hands. Ushers, you will help me quickly. The Lord is already touching them. Inside, outside. I've seen men that carry apostolic and prophetic mandates. Your generation should hear you. Charity should submit when you talk. But those powers are bound. I come to you as one sent by the priesthood of Melchizedek. In the name of Jesus the Lord, wherever you are standing, let that fire, let it touch now, let it rest now. Take that fire. Help the motions. Bring them here. Bring them here. Makarodo, Savas. Savas, Savas. Chalingo, your time is now. Voices that carry ancient wisdom, mantles that carry seals of prophetic orders, Pate Raki the power, Zegadani, Zanzali, Varagata. Help them, Moshas, help them. Kadosh, 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 Kadosh. Kadosh, 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 Kadosh. It's the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne. It's the Lamb of God who is worthy of our praise. Kadosh, 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 Lift your hands toward heaven. It's a sign of surrender. I'm out of time, so I'll be doing many things at the same time. The Lord is telling me now there is a grace for leadership. 
that he wants to put on you because some of you the scepter you will wield is in the corridors of power where you can make policies that will affect nation building some of you god wants to give you an anointing now for signs and for wonders i'm collapsing what is happening together because of our time it will come upon you like a flame of fire some of it will come upon you like a roar. They will catch it. And when you catch it, the power will rest upon you. Father, wherever they are standing. Ushers, please help them so people are not injured. What is hitting this place now is violent. It's a power that can uproot systems and establish new ones. Wherever you are standing now, Father, this is the hour. You see, at a certain time, the angel went down and troubled the waters. This is the time of the troubling of the waters. Everyone ordained for leadership. Everyone ordained for signs and wonders. From the left to the right. From the front to outside. To the back. To the galleries. To those watching online. In the name of Jesus, let the mantles rest. Take! You see it all he alone alone Cados, 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 if you have a calling to ministry please lift your right hand voices are about to emerge from this land the spirit of revival is about to hit this territory and strange voices will begin to emerge. I see a garment of fire about to clothe seven men and women here. These ones will carry the mandate and the spirit of revival. Father, wherever they are standing, a new fountain of the spirit, keepers of the flame, Holy Ghost, every minister here, saddled with this grace, this calling, this ordination. Now, let that come and rest upon them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Take! It's a fire! It will demand everything from you, but it will exhort you to power. It will exhort you to realm. As it comes upon you now, everything you have to surrender, but your life won't be the same again. Metei makona, metei makona, metei makona, metei makona. Aini bazandi so, metei makona, metei makona, bazandi so, metei makona, metei makona, metei makona. Oh, 
We're out of time. I want to pray for the sick now. The Holy Ghost is already talking to me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Help those under the anointing. But if we can be calm, let's be calm. Towards my right here, on this road, before that fan, standing at the back, before this first fan, I'm seeing somebody with a stomach condition. It's like an ulcer. It comes with excruciating pain, and it looks like there's something in your tummy. The Lord is telling me he is uprooting that thing somewhere here. Is there anybody here with that condition? A stomach condition. I, I saw it now in the spirit. Papa, come. Just before that fan. Any other person there? It's a stomach condition. Listen, please. That affliction will live now, not tomorrow. Now. The Bible says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Place your right hand on your tummy. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over this affliction. I command it to leave you now. Pains, go. Everything, help mama, everything planted. Oh my God. I cause this affliction. Go in the name of Jesus. Everything planted that is not of God, I rebuke it now. I command that injury. Dry up in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The Lord is telling me somebody has a condition with your left eye. I think it's towards the back there. I'm seeing something move like a trance towards my left back. You had a challenge with your left eye. It's like you're having a blurry vision or you can't even see. Can you lift your right hand if you are the one there? I'm seeing. Yes, I'm seeing hands there. I command that affliction to leave you now. I see in the name of Jesus. Check your stomach. Don't go back. Check it. Press that place you were having pain. Press it. Pastor Sonny, check it for them. Check that eye now. If you can see already, lift your hand and wave. You can already see. They are already waving. Come to the front. You can see now. Come. I told you, God will heal now. It's not by power. It's not by might. It's by the spirit of the living God. I'm seeing somebody in front here. Very close to me here. You have suffered from migraine. That pain has been there for years. Very close to me. One, two, three row here. There's a condition. That headache has refused to leave you. Come, sir. It will go now. Me 
sang Jesu Rama, Redeem Makona, Redeem Makona. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke that affliction. Come out of him. Power of God. In the name of Jesus. I don't have time. I want to pray for everybody who came here with an affliction. God will heal people now. If you have a pain on any part of your body, check them, Pastor Sonny. Those who are already healed. Two of them are healed of eye conditions already. If you have a pain on any part of your body, place your hand there. <coughs> if you have an organ infection, place your hand on your chest. If you couldn't walk, get ready to jump up. The moment we are done praying, rise up and begin to do what you couldn't do. <coughs> if I say in the name of Jesus, respond with the loudest hallelujah that can come out of you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I take authority over every blinding devil. I command you now. Come out of their eyes in the name of Jesus. I take authority over every deafening spirit. In the name of Jesus. Come out of their ears now. I take authority over every pain causing demon. Arthritis of the neck, of the back, of the limbs. In the name of Jesus. Let those chains break now. Everybody that couldn't walk, broken bones, damaged tendons and ligaments, in the name of Jesus, I command those bones, receive strength now. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Heart conditions. You have a hole in your heart. You have a palpitating heart. I command that heart. Receive your healing now. Amen. Heart be healed. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Kidney, lungs, liver. In the name of Jesus. I command every infirmity in you. Check out now. Amen. Check out now. Amen. Check out now. Amen. Every tumor in your body. Pile. Goiter. Breast tumor. Cancer. I take authority over you. I command you to dematerialize now. Amen. Be gone in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every joint that is locked from the knee to the shoulder to the ankle, in the knee to the elbow and the ankle, in the name of Jesus, I lose it now. Amen. Be free now. Amen. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke the spirit of dumbness. Everyone here who is afflicted in your throat, affecting your speech, I command dumbness. Be gone. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Lift your hands and honor the Lord. God is doing something now. If you are sure God will touch you now, lift those hands in faith. Sanji soruba mete makona basanji kunyaba mete makona mete makona. Sanji Check your bodies now. I'm rounding up in three minutes. A tumor has left you. A pain is gone. A broken bone. A lame leg can walk and I can see. Check your body now. Check. Check. In faith. Get your healing. Trace your healing. 
If you have noticed a healing, let me see your right hand. Everybody that has noticed, you have already noticed a healing. Let me see. Wave it, wave it, wave it. Look at what God has done. Somebody shout! Now here, we can't take the testimonies. Our time is gone. But the devil must know that we know that he's powerless. And you are the proof. Everyone who noticed the healing, let me see those hands again. Wherever you are standing, run to the front here. Run to the front here. You have received the healing now. Run to the front here. Can we have one prayer song? One. As we dance. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Put the devil to shame. Praise the mighty God, oh, he give me joy to the give me praise, oh. Praise the mighty God, he give me joy to the give me praise, oh. Praise the mighty God, oh, he give me joy to the give me praise, oh. Praise the mighty God, he give me joy to the give me praise, oh. Come go, is this how you celebrate miracles? Joy to the give me praise, oh. Come on, give the Lord a shout. Joy to the give me praise, oh. Praise the mighty God, oh, he give me joy to the give me praise, oh. Praise the mighty God, he give me joy to the give me praise, oh. I call you my father. You answer my prayer. I call you my brother. You answer my prayer. You answer my prayer. Hola, hola, hola. Hola, hola, hola. Fire, fire, fire. Fire, fire, fire. Uta, uta, uta. Uta, uta, uta. Uta, uta, uta. Uta, uta, uta. Hola, hola, hola. Hola, hola, hola. I love you, I love you, I I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love I dance like a winner, man. When you see me dance, I dance like a winner, man. Yeah. When you see me dance, oh, I dance like a winner, man. When you see me dance, I dance like a winner, man. Somebody give the Lord a shout! Dance like a winner, man. Dance like a winner, man. Say the number of people healed. Imagine if you were exercising authority every day. Imagine how many persons you would have helped. It's not about displaying power. It's about helping men and glorifying God. Imagine the number of people you would have helped. And this is for sickness. You can do the same for circumstances. Imagine how far your life would have gone. We can't even take the testimonies. You want to share one or two? Just a few. You, what? Gave, you gave three words of knowledge. You talked about... Uh, That's my brother, Pastor Sonny Owina. Can we celebrate grace? So be louder. You have been celebrated. Be louder now. Glory to God. You gave a word um, that there's, there are people here with ulcer pains. Ulcer pains. Yes, about three of them here. Mommy here had ulcer pain. Daddy for about two years. Daddy had ulcer pain for yes. about two years. Yes, and there was a sister standing here. What happened, for Daddy? For three years. I used to feel some sensational pain. You feel the pains there? Uh, yes. What happened now? It's vanished. It's vanished forever in the name of Jesus. Amen. Breaking news. Ulcer pain. Two years. Just vanished. Give the Lord a shout. For how long did you have your os the ulcer pain, Mama? 21 years. Ulcer. Did you hear that? Ulcer. You had ulcer pains for how long? 21 years. For 21 years. What happened now? Nothing. Nothing you feeling anymore? Yes. And you are just looking like that? 21 years ulcer pain. Somebody shout. Oh. When you see me dance, I, I dance like a winner, man. When you see me dance, I dance like a winner, man. No time, no time, no time. <laughs> Take the ceremony home. Apostle, you gave a word about someone who had an eye condition. Eye condition. Yes, this brother had an eye condition on his left. The, the left eye had, had a problem. But right now, he said... For how long? See. For two months, sir. What couldn't you do before with the eye? I watched dimly. I could not walk afar. You couldn't see far objects. Can yes, you see now? Yes, sir. You are sure? Yes. Sir. Close the eye that was fine and read what is on that screen. Close the eye that was fine. You can use your hand. Don't worry. Don't use your hand and close the one that was fine. It's what Penia, is it? Sir. Penia. Yes. And you are just looking like that. Somebody shout. Now, how many 
many of you had eye conditions but you are healed ah you had an eye problem look at the you are healed wait is it the line that went to the back there can somebody celebrate this god Woo! give the lord the shout Woo! drop your hands drop your hands if you were healed of eye challenge lift your right hand one two three four five six seven eight are you just looking like that how many of you have growth on your body but it left you had a growth a tumor you had a growth you too no no headache i'll come to headache how many of you had a tumor a physical growth and it disappeared a growth you had a growth that's one how many of you were he you were healed of an ear condition ear challenge you couldn't hear well or something was wrong that's one two three four five healed of ear condition how many of you had a bone challenge maybe you couldn't walk or something you had a bone a bone condition one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and on and on and on and on Shout glory! glory! Your healings are permanent in the name of Jesus. And as you leave this conference, God will begin to use you to heal others. It's not by power, it's not by might, it's by the Spirit of the living God. Give the Lord a shout! As I give the microphone to our Father, His Lordship, very quickly, if you are here tonight and you are not sure that if the trumpet sounds now, you are not sure where you are going, I can tell you, you are going to hell. Those of us who are going to be with God, we know. If you are not sure, this, you are going to hell. So don't, don't, don't contemplate it. There's no middle ground. It's either you are sure you'll be with God or you'll be sure you'll be with Satan. This is your opportunity. You have heard the word of God preached. You have seen the power of God. If you are here tonight and you have not made Jesus your Lord. I know two sessions, three sessions have already gone. But there could be one more person here who is about to make that decision. Lift your right hand. Be very bold about it. Jesus said, if you are not ashamed of me before men, I will not be ashamed of you before my father. If you are not sure where your eternity will take you better accept him now inside outside if you are lifting your hand run to the front here quickly and make peace with jesus quickly and make peace come on wherever you are standing run to the front make that decision if you are not ashamed of me before men i will not be ashamed of you before my father i have decided to follow Jesus I have decided to follow Jesus I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back I have decided to follow Jesus I have Decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. Clap hands for them as they come to the Lord. To follow Jesus.
your chest. Glory to God. Sister, this is not the time to snap, my dear. <laughs> this is the time to make commitment. Place your right hand on your chest. Say, dear Heavenly Father, I believe with all my heart that Jesus is your son. I believe he died for my sins. On the third day, he rose from the dead for my justification. Tonight, I confess with my mouth that this same Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I am now a part of the family of God. Thank you for accepting me, Father, in Jesus' precious name. Clap hands for them. This is the best decision of their life. Let's receive his lordship as he prays a prayer of blessing over them and withdraw the curtain. Have you been blessed tonight? Give the Lord a shout!